I had a godly mom. She loved Jesus. I've got a godly daddy. They served the Lord for over 50 years together in ministry. And my mama prayed for me. Lord knows she had a lot to pray for. But she could get a hold of God. And she prayed for me. And Brother Ken, I haven't sang this song since she went on to be with the Lord. But I want to try and share it with you this morning. It's entitled, Hello Mama. Let 
this song again speak to your heart. It's another request. Abraham prayed for the day that God would give him a son. You 
we see and he died. Then you come down to Enos. And we see in verse 9, Enos lived. And then in verse number 11, we find out that Enos did what? Yeah. He died. And then you come down to Canaan. And Canaan lived. And then in verse number 14, we found out that Canaan did what? Yeah. He died. And then we come down to Malahi. And he lived. And then we find out in verse number 17 that he did what? Yeah. He died. And then Jared lived. And then we find out in verse number 20 <coughs> that he died. And then we come to a fellow by the name of Enoch. The Bible said Enoch lived in verse 21, 60 and 5 years, and begat Methuselah. And Enoch walked with God. After he begat Methuselah 300 years and begat sons and daughters, and all the days of Enoch were 360 and five years. But there's a pattern that's broken here. You do not find in this scripture where it says, and he died. It says rather in verse number 23, again, all the days of Enoch were 360 and five years. And Enoch walked with God. And he did not die. The Bible says he was not for God took him. God took him. I'm telling you, in this chapter, there's a lot of begetting and a lot of dying. The scripture tells us it's appointed unto man once to die, and after that, the judgment. There's one thing that man can count on in this world is you're going to die. Why? Because sin. Sin entered in by one man, Adam, and by the first Adam, it's passed upon all men. How many of you are thankful this morning? Thank God for the second Adam. Amen. The Lord Jesus Christ, who came and took away the sin of the world. Are you glad for Jesus? Amen. Turn to somebody on your right and left side. I'm glad for Jesus. Tell somebody this morning, I'm glad he didn't die. Amen. 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 When you look at the Bible, one of the great books my dad gave me, Brother Glenn, as a young man, was Bible Giants. And when you look through that book and you read through the Bible and people talking about great figures of history of the Scriptures, in the Old Testament we think about Abraham, we think about Jacob. We think about Isaac. We think about Joshua. We think about David. And we think about Isaiah. Oh, they were great men. You go over in the New Testament, folks talk about Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. They talk about the Apostle Peter. They talk about the Apostle Paul. Oh, yeah. And don't forget this fellow by the name of Jesus Christ. How many of you think he's worth talking about this morning? Yeah. Well, these are great figures of the Bible, real people. The one thing I love about your pastor and his wife is that they're not perfect. I appreciate, thank God, they're real. Amen. Come on now, say amen. amen. How many of you know we need some real people? who wear the name Christian in this day and age. Amen. 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 But when we come to Enoch, he gets passed over a lot. Amen. Amen. Nobody rings his name out out first. You've got to look him up in the generations of Adam. Stop and think about it.
about it with me just a moment. Do you know that in the Old Testament, God gives us 51 words about Enoch? 51. And when you get over to the New Testament, there's a total of 94 words. So what I want to tell you, 145 words are describing the life of this man and his testimony in both the Old and the New Testament. Now stop and think about that just for a moment. Enoch's name has a meaning. You might want to write this down in the margin of your Bible. Enoch's name means dedication. That's what it means, dedication. Now, you've got to understand, back in those days, they just didn't give a baby a name right off the bat. They would stop and pray about it, think about it. They would look at that child, and then based upon leadership and attributes, they would give a child a name. How many of you heard of Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, yeah. and Azariah? We know them as Daniel and the three Hebrew children, right? Most folks remember them as Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego. But Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego was their Chaldean names. After they were caught and captured and carried into bondage, then the Chaldeans changed their name. Why? Because their Hebrew name meant something. It was their identity. Every one of their names reflected upon the person and character of God. David means who is like God. Now, if you're against God, you're not going to be wanting to call somebody regularly by the name who is like God. Are you with me? Come on now. Y'all with me this morning, ain't you? Yes. Loosen up. I said last night they saw you when you drove in. <laughs> We're here to have a good time. It's Jubilee time. Amen. Amen. It's time to rejoice. How many of you are glad you can rejoice because your name is written in the last book of life? Amen. I'm not going to preach long. I preached preach for a brother, Brother Adam, a few years ago up in Louisville. Large black church in Louisville. And uh, I was sitting on the, my first time there. I was sitting on the platform. And I sang and the choir sang with me. We had a good time. Yeah. And uh, so I'm, I'm running through in my mind what the Holy Spirit wants us to say. And the preacher leans over and kind of bumps me on the arm a little bit. He said, uh, how long you preach? <laughs> I said, well... My sermons are like baloney. They're good wherever you cut them off. <laughs> How long you want me to preach? <laughs> he said, well, Reverend, he said, if you don't preach at least an hour and 45 minutes, better two hours, they won't think you got anything. <laughs> I said, are you serious? <laughs> I said, are you serious? He said, yes, sir, I am. Well, that's like unleashing the bulldog. <laughs> Two hours and 30 minutes later, we were rocking on. And the blessed part of it was they would whip me all the way. Now, if you'll listen intently this morning, I'll speak quickly. Amen. But the Holy Spirit's got something for you to hear this morning. Amen. Yes. Enoch's name meant dedication. Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, all were names of God. About the character of God. And the devil, the first thing he did was try to change their name. How many of you know this morning the devil's trying to change your name too? Amen. But names meant something. We've kind of gotten away from that. My name's Keelan. My mama named me Keelan. And because my mama named me Keelan, I stuck with it. 
Daddy said he never had a choice in the matter. <laughs> it's Irish. But they kind of, I don't know what happened, but to kind of show you how we get away from that, Keelan is Irish and it means slender little one. <laughs> So when you call my name Keelan, I rejoice because I'm the slender little one. <laughs> At least in my mama's eyes. Amen. <laughs> but Enoch's name meant dedication. In Genesis 5, 19 through 24, we have a record of a man named Enoch. He's a man who I want you to know this morning was familiar with God. Familiar with God. What do you mean by that, Brother Lamb? I mean the Bible tells us that he walked with God. He walked with God. Now listen, we, we get so sidetracked, we get so off the path, that we think something that Enoch was doing is something that you and I can't do. It's just the opposite. What I want you to know is you will have a jubilee in your soul when you walk with God. Right, How many of you know you don't have to be in the church to walk with God? Amen. How many of you glad you can walk with Him at home? Amen. You can walk with Him in the car. You can walk with him on the job. You can walk with him in school. How many of you glad he said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you? That means you can walk with him all the time. Right. Now, what does it mean to walk with God? It means to go in the same direction that God's going. Yeah. Put that down in your spirit. I used to walk with my dad. He'd take that big old hand, take me by the hand, and I thought I was walking him, but as I grew up, I figured out he was a walking me. I was walking with him. We were going in the same direction. Enoch was living in a hard time when the whole world was going in a different direction. They were going away from God. But Enoch was going with God. How many of you believe this morning it's better to be walking with God than away from God? Amen. God walked with Enoch. Enoch walked with God. Enoch was familiar with God. As a result of that, one day, I just imagine, he and the Lord were walking together. Now, I don't mean physical, like Brother Crow and I be walking side to side down the road. Enoch is walking with God in the Spirit and walking in the direction that God wants him to go in. And one day, at the end of the day, it seems like God might have said, Enoch, you're closer to my house than yours. Why don't you just come home with me? And the Bible says he was not. He and one other man in the Bible have this distinction that they left this world without seeing death. You heard of the astronauts? Enoch was a was not. How many of you are looking forward to the day when you might be a was not? Uh, come on now, church. Amen. How many of you believe Jesus is coming again? Amen. Do you believe in the rapture of the church? Amen. My soul, this morning, every believer in here before we get out of here might be a was not. <coughs> Stop and think about it this morning. He walked with God. He went in the same direction that God did. Now turn over to Hebrews chapter 11. Go over there to the Hall of Faith. Hebrews chapter number 11 this morning. May the Holy Spirit speak to our hearts. 
Hebrews 11. How many are thankful for the Word of God this morning? Amen. Amen. Now, when you stop and look at this, look down with me at verse number 5. Hebrews 11. The Bible said, By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God had done what? Translated. Had translated him. For before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. Now what does it take to please God? Look at verse 6. By, but without faith, it is impossible to please Him. For he that cometh to God must believe that He is, and that He's a rewarder of them that diligently what? Seek him. What was special about Enoch? He believed God. And he came to him. And he saw him. And he walked with him. Amen. Enoch not only was familiar with God, but how many of you recognize this morning? He was favored by God. God favored him. Why? Because of his faith. It pleased God. Now here's something I want to say to you this morning. If you're saved by grace, you have a testimony. How many of you have a testimony this morning? Amen? If there's one thing we all have in common in our testimony, we were all sinners. Amen? Christ died for our sins. We heard the word and was convicted by the Holy Spirit Amen. of our Lord. And we called unto him. How many of you glad he heard and reached further down than you could reach up? Amen. 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 And we were saved by his marvelous grace. And we are kept by the power of God unto the day of redemption. Can you say amen to that? Amen. We all have that common testimony. If you're a child of God this morning, you got that testimony. Amen. But I want you to notice what verse 5 says about Enoch. It didn't say he had a testimony. It says that he had this testimony. Look at that now. This testimony. What was this testimony? That he pleased that he please God. My question to you and to I this morning, do we have this testimony? Yes, I'm saved. Yes, I'm a child of God. But is my life right now pleasing unto God? Enoch had that testimony. And because he had that testimony, the Bible tells us God was familiar with him and God did something special for Enoch. He translated him. Now, that word translation is an action. It means that he is changing from what he is into something brand new. Amen. Amen. He was a man with flesh and blood walking on planet earth. But by the word of God, how many of you recognize again tonight, this morning, that God's word defines reality. Amen. 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 Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. What's it mean this morning? It means that when God says it, it's so. And the action takes place. Amen. And so he's walking with God. And the next thing we know, he was not. Right. And was not found. Now, the Holy Spirit put that in there so you'll know they looked for him. <laughs> there were.
were sons that loved him. Don't you know they look for him? Yeah. Amen? Amen? Relatives look for him. Who was this man, this preacher of the gospel, who is preaching, walking with God in that dark hour? I'm telling you, maybe somebody grabbed Uncle Enoch. Maybe somebody did something to it. I'm telling you, they looked for him, but he was not found. Why? Because he'd been translated. Amen. He took not an airplane ride. He got a plane air ride. <laughs> Woo! Amen. Amen. He took a plane air ride, glory to God. He knew God. He was motivated to walk with God. Somebody said uh, uh, about this word translation and have tried to put it down, especially in relationship to the Bible. They say always, oh, it's just a translation. It's just a translation. Let me ask you something, my friend. If God can cre create the Word, if He can speak the Word into existence, if He can speak and life comes into existence, my friend, what makes you think he can't preserve his word? Amen. I mean, I'd be glad today we have the <coughs> word of God. Amen. It's just a translation. Yes, it is. But can I remind you this morning that God did it? Right. God did it. Not only did God do it, but he used a human instrument. He used men inspired by the Holy Ghost of God to preserve His Word. Amen. Amen. Can I say something else about it? It's perfect. Amen. It's the perfect Word of God. Don't you get sick and tired of people sitting in judgment of the Bible instead of letting the Bible sit in judgment of that Word? Yes. Come on now. Yes. And then I got something else to say. It's eternal. Right. Jesus said heaven and earth would pass away, but my word shall not pass away. Somebody say amen. 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 So that's pretty good in translation. Amen. amen. Thank God for the translation. Well, I want you to know it applies also to Brother Enoch. Number one, God did the translating. Yeah. Number two, he had a human instrument involved. He had a man who walked with him. Amen. 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 Not only did he walk with him, but number three, it's a perfect translation, for he was not found. And I got news for you, he still has not been found. <laughs> He's the longest listed missing person. <laughs> His picture at the post office is done yellow. <laughs> Amen. So how many of you say that was a perfect translation? Yeah. He took him out of what he was into something brand new. And how many of you are thankful it's eternal? Amen. 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 So we find that he had a specific testimony. The Bible said this testimony that he pleased God. Now, take your Bibles with me, and let's turn over, if you would, in Scripture together, and allow the Lord to speak to our heart out of the book of Colossians. I'm thankful for the Word of God, aren't you? Amen. I'm glad God speaks to us by His Word. The Bible tells us in Scripture that we, as believers, have been translated out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of His dear Son. I want you to recognize this morning that translation were not just good 
for Enoch and Elisha. But you, as a believer in Jesus Christ this morning, have yourself been translated. How many of you agree with me? You had an old nature. You were born a sinner. You were under the power of Satan. Let me just make it clear. The devil was your daddy. Amen. Amen. He pulls your strings. You were born that way. You know a dog doesn't have to be trained to bark. He barks because he's a dog. And a cat meows because he's a cat. You sin because you're a sinner. Sinning don't make you a sinner. You sin because you're a sinner. I don't care what your mama said about you. <laughs> and you were under the power of the devil. How many of you are glad, though, one day he translated you out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son? Amen. Amen. How many of you this morning are thankful that he delivered you from the power of the devil? Amen. I'm sorry I didn't hear you. Amen. Amen. How many of you are thankful this morning the devil no more has dominion over you? Amen. The blood of Jesus Christ has translated you. The work he did on that cross has translated you. The resurrection has translated you unto a blessed hope. What I'm trying to tell you is this morning, if you've been saved, you can have a jubilee here this morning because you've been translated. Amen. You're not what you used to be. How many are you thankful for that? Amen. How many of you are thankful one of these days you're going to be something that you're not named? Amen. How many of you are thankful like John said that one day, I don't know what we're going to be, but this I do know, we shall be like Him. Amen. How do you get that translation? You get it by the new birth. You get born again. You get saved. How many believe that's a Bible term? Amen. Amen. And you get translated out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son. What I'm trying to tell you is right now you're in kingdom living. Why do you mean by that? How many of you believe he's king of kings and lord of lords? Amen. Adam's up here just a minute. Great. Just come on up here, Dad. Straighten up. Straighten your coat up. Come on, son. Look at that. Have you been saved? Yes. You're a child of king? Yes. You're a king's kid. You're something special. Did you see all that mess they made over that baby that's born over in England? Yeah. Lord, let's pray he looks better than his daddy. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly better than his papa. Amen. <laughs> But they made a, a big fuss over that because that baby could one day be the king of England. What I want you to know is right here in the nasty now and now, you don't have to die to get it. You're already a child of the king. You're a king's kid. Amen. You're in kingdom living now. How many of you don't have to die to get it? Amen. Woo! Come on now. Get it? You've got eternal life right now. Amen. Listen, my friend. You're, you, we're not trying to bring the kingdom in to the world. That's not our job. Jesus presented the kingdom of God to the Jews. They rejected him and crucified him over it. You can rest assured that one day in the tribulation period that the nation of Israel be born in a day and the kingdom will be preached in throughout the world. But i got news for you. The church ain't going to be here. Amen. Amen. Quit 
trying to live in the kingdom of God on planet earth, live right now in kingdom living as a child of God. You're saved. Safe, secure, and on your way to glory. Somebody say amen. amen. Woo! Aren't you glad you're a king's kid? Yes. You look like one. He come in sharp this morning. I told him, I said, son, you look good enough to bury. <laughs> amen. I want to ask you in here this morning. How many of you have been translated? From the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light. Amen. Have you been translated from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of his dear son? Amen. Have you been washed in <coughs> Is heaven your heaven? If you've not been saved this morning, you haven't been translated. But I want you to know before we leave this service, even right now in the pew you're sitting in, you can bow your heart to God and say, God, forgive me as a sinner and save my soul. Believe Him and trust Him and He'll translate you right there where you sit. Amen. Woo! Glory to God. How many of you remember when you got saved? Amen. You ain't got over yet, have you? No. Huh? I see a lot of folks look like they got over. <laughs> Ain't nothing to get over, amen? It's time to get in, not get out, amen? It's time to rejoice. Oh, my friend, God's got something in store for you. He's translated you here in the nasty now and now. Praise God, Brother Glenn, i got an hour left, amen? <laughs> just now in my introduction. <laughs> oh, think about it this morning. You are not the same, never to be the same again. Amen. What's going on? Well, the Apostle Paul, we, we learned that we're not our own. We've been bought with a price. God's doing something. For his kids. Jesus tells us that he went to prepare a place for us. And if he went to prepare a place for us, he will come again and receive us where? Unto himself. That where he is, there we may be what? Awesome. Awesome. How many of you are looking forward to that awesome? Amen. Amen. Here's what's going on right now on planet Earth. Turn to Ephesians chapter number 3. The Bible said in verse 9, And to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery which from the beginning of the world hath been hid in God, who created all things by Jesus Christ. Look at verse 10. To the intent that now under the principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church the manifold wisdom of God. According to the eternal purpose which He purposed in Christ Jesus our Lord, in whom we have boldness and access with confidence by the faith of Him. Wherefore I desire that He faint not, my tribulation for you, which is your glory. Let me just say something to you this morning, church. Back in eternity past, Lucifer, Satan, accused God of not being a good God. And he said he would ascend to the throne of the Most High. And in Lambology, let me just tell you what he said. He said, God, you ain't a good God. I could be a lot better God. And he is so cunning and so smooth that he was able to beguile one-third of the angelic host. 
Now I'm talking about people in the present, beings in the presence of God. That seen the gates of her, the walls of Jasper, the Crystal River, the Golden Street, the throne of God, the seraphims crying, holy, holy, holy. I'm talking about in the middle of that, he lied on God and the God of the third of the angelic host. What makes you think you can handle the devil? <coughs> I get a kick out of them guys on TV saying they gave the devil a black eye. <laughs> you just watch, it won't be long, the devil will drop kick them through the goalpost of life. <laughs> How many of you know the devil has no happy old sinner? Amen. Amen. How many of you glad God got you out just in time? Amen. I mean, he beguiled Eve. In the garden, in innocence, he said, as God said, oh, Eve, he knows if you eat that, you'll be as smart as he is. He's a liar. Somebody say out loud with me. He's a liar. Don't listen to him. He's smooth. He's a liar. Buddy, put a black mark against God. You wonder why earth is here? Why light is here, the stars, the firmament, all of God's creation, and man? What's God doing now? He's vindicating his name. He's proving to the principalities and powers <coughs> that he is a good God. He's proving that he is a loving God. That he's a caring God. So much so that he gave himself his son for sinful man. And when you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you vindicate his name. Amen. Amen. When you walk with him day by day, you vindicate his name. You remember the story of Job? Job just go along just fine. Got almost as many kids as the Glovers. <laughs> <laughs> Everything's good. The barns are full. The house is full. Everything's fine. But the thing about Job was he loved God more than he loved those things. And God knew it. And one day, old Slewfoot, that liar, that accuser, is up there accusing. And God said, oh, by the way, have you considered my servant? No. He's a righteous man. The old devil said, I know Job. And then Job accuses, or then the devil accuses Job. Ah, oh, the only reason why he serves you is because he got it. That's the only reason why he loves you. You petted him. And God says, oh yeah? Well, I'll tell you what you can do. You can touch everything about him but his soul. How I many of you are glad this morning the devil can't have your soul? Amen. 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 And you've got to get to the place where you're like Job, is that he can have Because at the bottom of the line, the question is, is God enough for you? Amen. And thank God for Job, it was. It was. you got to be careful about what you say about God. Sister Job said, why don't you just curse God and die? Ladies, she had 90 more months of pregnancy. <laughs> You ever thought think about that? Right? Be careful. Ain't y'all glad you came this morning? <laughs> Don't say nothing about God. <laughs> Amen? But here's what I want to close with. The Bible tells us that to the intent, the intent of God, when we get home,
Because you've vindicated His name. <coughs> the church of the Lord Jesus. Because you've walked with Him. And talked with Him. And you're now home in glory. The Bible tells us that He, uh, every uh, 2,000 <coughs> years, every age, 2,000 3,000 years. Imagine it. Now, I know in heaven there's no night, right? So, uh, but let's just say that God steps out in the light and says, Hey, church! Come on over here. Come on down here by the tree of life. The crystal river. You'd have to tell my wife, Conrad, quit fishing. Come on up here. <laughs> she loves fish. Come on over here, church. Angels, strike up the band. Play some heavenly music. And the music's going in the background. And God says, listen here. I'm thankful that you loved me and you vindicated my name by loving me and believing in me. And I, for the ages to come, are going to show forth the exceeding riches of my grace through Christ Jesus. And here's what's going to happen. Now, he created this world, this universe, everything that's in it and above it. In how many days? Six days. Six days. Six days. How long has Jesus been gone? Well, 2,000 years, right? A day with the Lord is 1,000 years, 1,000 years is a day. So the Lord's been gone a couple of days. But in our time, 2,000 years, an age. We're in heaven, and God says, come here, children. Come here. All you's been translated, come here. Now line up right here. Hear that angel choir back there singing. Hear that music. You're standing there with your loved ones that's gone on before. They ain't sick. They're healthy. They're perfect. They're like Jesus. And by the way, you are too. Amen. Amen. And then it's almost as if God is going to pull the curtain back and say, I exceedingly made this for you. If he made the world and the universe in six days, what did he make in 2,000 years? And about the time the church is enjoying that for a couple of days, for an age, Play a new song over there, angel. Hey, church. Come here. I got something new for you. What about this? How many of you are looking forward to that day of what about this? Amen. How many of you are thankful that you've been translated out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son. Amen. Amen. Let's stand with heads bowed and eyes.